You know, there's a lot of information that goes around on the internet. Some of it good, some of it not so good. You've got to kind of learn who you can take information from and who you can't. Uh, some people that I've always said it's probably not the best idea to take information from are people that speak in absolutes all the time. Because very few things are absolute. Uh, one group of people that love to speak in absolutes are the tactitards. They just love to say, this is the right way, and this is the wrong way, and this is the right idea, and this is the wrong idea. They just love to do that. And uh, one of the things I've been hearing come back at me a lot from people that have heard something from the tactitards that they want to have me weigh in on is that all handgun calibers are the same. Doesn't matter what handgun caliber you carry, it's going to perform the same. And I just want to say, that's total bullshit. That is not even close to true. Some people will like to base it on jail tests. They'll like to say, well, they all perform very similar in jail, so they're all going to perform very similar in people, and jail really is a really true ballistic test of how it performs in real world. No, it isn't. <laughs> but jail was never even meant to be a true ballistic test of real world performance. It was just a constant that they could use to measure how deep an item would penetrate in a very st static substance. That's all it was. Had nothing to do with real world performance. Bullets don't perform the same in the real world that they do in jail. No matter how closely they perform in jail doesn't mean they'll perform the same somewhere else. Like if I had a sharpened pencil and then a similar diameter sharpened piece of steel and a little tube I could blow them out of, I could blow the pencil and the steel right about the same into a piece of gel. But put a piece of glass in front of it, the pencil is going to bounce off, whereas the steel can still go through. So there are lots of things that make a difference. I think a lot of these people, uh, they try to be, try to sound like they know something while they're really just being really short-sighted. Sure, if you want to say most handgun calibers will perform the same against the soft bits in a human being, that's pretty much true. Uh, if you can shoot someone from 10 yards away and you miss the ribs and it goes right through the uh, torso, yeah, they're all going to perform similarly, as long as they hit, like I said, the soft bits. But all handgun calibers don't perform the same against other factors, like what kind of clothing you're wearing. Uh, do they hit a bone? you know, etc. I've spoken to uh, many a medical professional, even some emergency room uh, doctors that I'm related to, who have dealt with a lot of gunshot wounds in Birmingham, and they will tell you that with calibers that are 380, 9mm, etc., one of the best things you can have happen is it hit a bone. It might shatter a rib and stop, or it might just deflect off, but if that can prevent it from hitting something major, that happens all the time, whereas something like a 10mm that's kind of bone blind is one uh, is the way one of the doctors uh, described it to me. Doesn't really care if bones get in the way or not. That's why I didn't like 10 millimeter. So uh, they don't perform the same in the human body when you take into account things like clothing or bones, etc. It's different. Anyone who's hunted knows all calibers don't penetrate bone the same, even in rifle calibers. So. That's not the same. You know, that's a big difference in how they perform. Especially like if you're wearing, if someone is wearing light body armor, like you're against someone like an active killer at the mall and they're wearing light body armor. If you hit them directly with a 38 or a 380, that might not even transfer enough energy into their body to even register to as severe pain to them. Whereas if you hit them dead center with a, you know, a 44 Magnum, <laughs> it's going to transfer enough energy into their chest. It might crack their ribs. Big difference there. So trying to pretend that it's the same is just ridiculous. There's all kinds of difference. Anyone that's ever shot at uh, a windshield on a car, like an old junk car, or someone who shot at an old door from a house, or a car door, you know bullets don't perform the same way when they penetrate those barriers. Uh, if you're shooting at a glass windshield, if you've ever been in law enforcement, you've had to read the studies on windshields, etc., you know, uh, nine millimeters don't really tend to do very well because they don't maintain enough of their mass after they uh, exit the other side of the glass because it's laminated glass to really do much damage. Uh, 
Uh, that's quite often the case. Uh, 45s, believe it or not, often have a problem depending on the slope of the windshield with deflection because of the size of the face of the bullet and the speed that it's moving at. Uh, whereas if you hit straight on, it really has good penetration. But then there's rounds like 10 millimeter, bonded 40s, etc., that do extremely well through laminated glass. So there's a huge difference right there. Uh, anyone that was a juvenile delinquent when they were young and went out and shot at street signs, you know that 38 didn't penetrate the street signs. Your 44 Magnum will penetrate a street sign. Your 357 Magnum can even penetrate a street sign. Nine millimeters don't penetrate the metal street signs. So there's differences. There's big differences. Uh, like I say, trying to pretend that it's the same, it's not. Now, there is one similarity between all the calibers. Most people, no matter who they are or what you shoot them with, once they're shot at or shot, they don't want to keep fighting. They want to get away. So it wouldn't matter if you pull out your 25 and hit them in the chest or your 9mm and hit them in the shoulder or wherever. Uh, if you don't even incapacitate them, they're probably still going to want to get out of there. But if you're fighting someone who's determined to harm you, may have a grudge, or maybe you're just a particularly big dick, uh, they're determined to hurt you, or their ability to feel pain has been impaired by drugs or alcohol, or their ability to make a good judgment has been impaired by drugs or alcohol, you might want something that does a little better, something that actually incapacitates them. All rounds don't incapacitate the same. A 38 right here in the chest may not incapacitate the same as a 45 or a 44 Magnum or a 357 Magnum right here. You might do more soft tissue damage. You might get more bleeding. You might get more nerve damage with the more powerful round. It may penetrate more. Even if it hits a rib, it may shatter a rib, may shatter your shoulder blade. Whereas the lower calibers probably aren't going to do that. That's a big difference. And I think that most of us have seen that, have seen that in studies we've done about wounds from gunshots, etc. So it has a lot to do with circumstance, but there are big differences between calibers. You can't just choose any caliber and pretend it's going to act like any other caliber. If you and I go out tomorrow and we're like, let's see which one of us can destroy that cinder block first, and you're shooting a 380 and I'm shooting a 44 Magnum, who do you think is going to destroy the cinder block first? And if there was someone behind that cinder block wall that was lobbing shit at us, who do you think would have a better advantage against that person? So there are differences. And not only differences in caliber, but in what rounds you choose. Uh, like lead rounds have more problem with some hard barriers like laminated glass, etc. Whereas a solid copper round goes right through. Where a bonded round has a lot less trouble getting through. A jacketed bonded round. So there are big differences in performance when you choose a handgun. Not just when you choose the caliber, but when you also choose what round you use. There's a big difference. So don't let people tell you there isn't. Like I said, anyone who says there's no difference in how they perform, well, they're ridiculously misinformed because there's big differences. Anyone who shot a gun knows there's big differences. If you've ever leaned an old door up against it, like I say, like your old barn and shot at it, you know, hey, let's just shoot it with the 22s because then we get to shoot it a lot. If we shoot it with the 44, we get to shoot it like three times. You <laughs> know, big difference there. So there is a difference. And I'll tell you this right now. Anyone, anyone that tries to tell you differently, well, they're either one of three things. They're either ignorant, they're dishonest, or they're just woefully short-sighted. And I don't know about you, but when it comes to advice that I have to count on with my life, I don't want to take tactical advice from that person if they're any of those three things. <gasps> Oops. Thank you.